Uh, good afternoon, one and all. Myself, Dr. Rupa Sri. Okay, today we are going to discuss the topic that is objective science of first trimester. See, we'll have subjective science and objective science. Most of the students will not have any clarity what are subjective or what are objective. Objective means, see, objective means those signs or signs which are seen by a doctor that is a gynecologist okay these are the objective signs which only the doctors can be seen okay subject to signs means those are the symptoms which the patient will come and say in the hospital okay let's see for abdominal see first point which is very important is up to 12 weeks uterus is a pelvic organ Okay, pelvic organ. Then it is present as okay per abdominal. After 12 weeks, we can find it as per abdominal organ or supra pubic bulge. Okay, if you take this as a uterus and when we see this as a you have to hear as a pelvic cavity. It will be spreading upwards. Okay. This is the pelvic up to 12 weeks. And this is the suprapubic bulge after 12 weeks. Okay. Now we come to see at 6th week. We can explain the uterus as a hen egg. Okay. It will be present as an egg size. Okay. At 8th week we can describe it as a size of cricket ball. Okay, cricket ball. And last at 12 weeks as size of fetal head. And last after 12 weeks the pyriform shape of uterus is changed to globular globular shape see every time per abdominal pelvic we distinguish only it after 12 weeks okay in most of your clinicals uh, you'll be saying that uh, uterus will be present as a very small bulge okay so after 12 weeks now we'll see the questions okay see after 12 weeks we can elicit uterus as simply a supra pubic bulge and see, how can you see at 6th week, you just can be seen as a hand neck. At 8th week, a size of cricket ball. And at 12th week, a size of fetal head. And we can see the normal shape of the uterus is pyriform shape. But it is changed to globular. Okay, globular after 12th week. Okay, all this what I have written on this slide is, is, a, is a question. Okay, it will be helping you to distinguish from other options. Okay, now we will come to the next slide. Now, we'll see some of the abdominal and also the vaginal signs. Piska kick sign, okay? That is, if there is any lateral implantation, there is asymmetry of the uterus. Asymmetry of the uterus. Later on, uterus restores its symmetrical position. And let's see. What happens is, sometimes there may be the uterus, but there may be lateral implantation here. Means, there actually it should be in the center. The implantation should be in the center. Because of the lateral implantation, we will see there will be some asymmetry of the uterus that it will be more and broad at the upper part and narrow at the lower part like that it will be. Okay. So what happens is as the gestational age increases or advances, the normal shape and the size of the uterus becomes symmetrical. Okay. This is the Piska kick sign. Okay. It is a question. And see, here you can feel it will be narrow, it will be broad above like that. So we can else it, it is a clinical sign. As I said, it is a 
objective sign which will be elicited by the doctor and this is the discarcaic sign because of the lateral implantation in the uterus. Next, Hagar sign. See, Hagar sign means what happens is here it is the the upper part of uterus becomes broad by the growing uterus, growing fetus and the lower part is narrow. Okay, how we can elicit this sign means? See, the two fingers which are present pervaginally, okay, and the abdominal fingers, okay. These abdominal fingers and the vaginal fingers will be occluding at the, behind at the broader part of the uterus, okay. This is the part which are, we are going to elicit is the Hagar sign, okay. See, the upper part becomes broader and broader and the lower part will become narrower, okay. This is the Hagar sign. And next is the PAMAS test. How we will exit this test is at 4 to 8 weeks, there are some regular rhythmic contractions of the uterus. Okay. When we place the hand on the abdomen and when we see it, there will be some, some type of contractions on the uterus. Okay. Initially, the contraction phase is 30 seconds. But later on, as the gestational age increases, therefore, it increases. Okay. 30 seconds and other 30 seconds will be the relaxation phase like that. It will be altering. See, these are the contractions which can be seen in the initial phase. But after 12th week, what happens is, the gap between the contractions increases. See, this is the relaxation phase. Okay. This is a contraction and this is the relaxation. After 12th week, what happens is, the gap between the contractions increases. That is, the relaxation phase increases. It is about 90 seconds. Okay. As the gestation is increases, the relaxation phase increases. It is about 90 seconds. Okay. This is the palm stress. Palm stress is nothing. You keep the palm on the abdomen and you will feel some of the regular rhythmic contractions. Initially, the contractions will be more. That is 30 seconds of contraction, 30 seconds of relaxation. The phase will be going on continuously in this manner. Okay. But after 12 weeks, what happens is between the contractions, there will be a relaxation phase of 90 seconds and later on they will become irregular and we cannot palpate it also. Last In the last stage of the gestation phase, later on at the time of the labor only, these contractions can be felt. This is the PAMAS test. And next will now the, the all the three, what is this? That is the Piscacex, Hagar's and the Palmer's are the abdominal. We can see it. But purely the vaginal signs. What are the vaginal signs? See, it is the Jacquemus sign or the Chadwick sign. See, it is the bluish discoloration. Bluish discoloration of the vestibule and the anterior vaginal wall. See, whole thing is a vestibule. See the anterior vaginal wall, the cervix, everything is bluish. Why? Why it is bluish in color? Because of the increased vascularity. As I said in pregnancy, the blood supply goes on increasing to every each and every part. Okay. Because of the increased vascularity and also because of local condition. Okay. See why I have kept these images. These are sometimes there will be image based questions. Okay. If you remember this image, you can answer it throughout correctly. Okay, so this is the Jacquemus or the Chadwick sign. There will be bluish discoloration of the vestibule and also the uh, cervix and anterior vaginal wall, everything. Why? We should remember the reason every time. Okay, 
because of the increased vascularity or blood supply or because of the local condition there will be this bluish discoloration these are the particular pervaginal signs which can be elicited in the opd basis next goodell sign okay goodell sign means the lips of the cervix will become very soft the cervical lips that is anterior and the posterior will be very soft okay how will compare how will compare that is it is very soft the non pregnant state cervix will be as tip of nose see how will palpate the tip of the nose it a little hard okay this is the tip of the nose non pregnant state but in case of pregnancy we can describe the cervix as lips of the mouth see see the lips they'll be very soft okay we'll compare this is a comparison okay why because same this was a increased vascularity there is congestion and also some amount of mucoid discharge also can be seen there will be vascularity congestion of the cervix because of the increased vascularity and last we can see some mucoid discharge also okay this is the cervical or the goodell sign next vaginal osseander sign nothing this is very simple we can see some of the palpations that is we can see some of the oscillations there while palpating the vagina and cervix okay so these are the pulsations which can be which can be felt okay this is the vaginal osseander sign that is the pulsations which can be felt while examination these are the osseander sign what i have said is only the first trimester and the findings which can be elicited by the doctor only okay the parabdominal signs and the pervaginal signs parabdominal we can see that is a piscakex sign and the hagar sign okay and the palmas test can be seen these three these are all below 12 weeks only and pervaginal we can see the osseander that is chadwick sign or the jacquemus sign and the goodell sign and these are the osseander sign everything is mostly because of the increased vascularity and the local condition because of the vascularity and the presence of some of the mucoid discharge there and this can be elicited only up to 12 weeks okay i think uh, you all understood this it was very small very short and sweet topic i want you all to understand everything with the reason so that you can remember forever and also you can answer everything correctly okay thank you